Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Rapine. For those of you that are new here, I am a travel and landscape photographer based out of Denver, Colorado. And in North America, we just had our uh, great total eclipse um, on April 8th. And so I decided today I wanted to go through uh, and do some post-processing and show you how I got this photo of uh, a little more detailed corona around um, the sun and moon during totality. All right, so let's, uh, let's jump into it. So I've already picked out my five images that I'm gonna stack together to bring out the corona even more. These were all shot at uh, 1 30th of a second, F16, ISO 100. I was <laughs> around, started at 400 millimeter, and I think as I, you know, was twisting my filter off of uh, my lens for totality, I kind of pushed it in a little bit. So um, that's how we got this 376.7 millimeters. Um, but not to worry because they're all shot right around there. So I've, I've reset this one so I can show you a little bit of the Lightroom editing that I went through. Um, the first thing that I do when I come into Lightroom is I want to change this profile and typically I like to choose this landscape. I think it does a better job at just, uh, you know, representing the colors and what I saw on the day of especially me being a, a landscape photographer. Um, if you feel like you want to, you know, warm the image up a bit, you could change the temp to say something like 6,500, give it that little uh, goldish glow. Um, I am gonna stay around that sun uh, daylight setting. So you could come in here and do daylight um, or you know, you could go with whatever uh, your white balance was when it was shot. The main thing is you want the white balance to be the same for everything. Uh, you want all of these settings to be the same for all of your images. <laughs> all right, so let's go down to the tones. Um, I'm going to start off and I'm, I am going to raise the uh, exposure a bit so I can start to see a little more of that Corona coming out on the edge there and you can if you want zoom into a hundred percent And just you know, maybe press I and get rid of that information uh, What I'm really paying attention to is up here in the outer edges um, I know there's a, a Big flare right here in the corona. So I want to bring that out and try and bring the detail out of that section um, so let's see, actually I'm going to go down on my highlights and we're going to bring up the shadows a bit, bring up this white a bit, maybe to there, see if this black needs to come up, maybe a little more on black. I'm also going to increase my contrast and already you can see kind of a big difference in our start to where we're at now, just by hitting that backspace. I'm gonna increase the exposure a little more so you can start to see it. And really I'm paying attention to this histogram. I, I don't wanna blow anything out. Um, so I do want to be mindful up there. I'm not really concerned too much about how far I'm going up on here because if I do introduce noise, I am stacking five Im images, so that noise will be reduced in the um, final image by stacking. So I think that looks good. Maybe bring down the highlights a little more, maybe even all the way to 50%, and you can start to see those, uh, those solar prominences. Um, that were happening during the eclipse, which is awesome. All right, I think that's good. Let's go down to our presence here. We're going to bring the texture up quite a bit. And you can see, if you really crank this, how cool that is, um, how much detail is in there. Uh, for me, 
I am going to probably let this live right around, uh, let's say, the 40 mark. Clarity, too. You could really cl crank the clarity. And you know what? I'm actually... I'm going to put clarity, I think, at the 40 mark and maybe bring this down to the 20. Then lastly, you can see uh, what the dehaze does. Um, for me personally, maybe, maybe we bring that up to like 5. Or we could see what... Yeah, I think I like it at 5. You may be able to go to 10, 5 to 10. And basically what dehaze is doing, it's removing some of that atmosphere. Um, this was a very cloudy day for me. So, uh, you know, it could be removing a little bit of that so that, that that detail comes out more. And you can start to see just how different those two, just, just by doing all that, right, how much you can bring out that detail. I am going to come down here to my curves. Uh, you could just do a simple S curve, you know, like boom, boom, and see how that looks. I personally, I don't think the darks need it. I wanted to bring out the light though, a little bit. I think maybe, maybe like, maybe I don't need that dot. Maybe something like that. You know, it's subtle, not too much, but it, it gives a little more of that contrast, right? Um, next, I'm gonna come down to these this details panel. And one thing I wanna do is I wanna remove this sharpening because I don't wanna sharpen it just quite yet, right? We're gonna go and stack these into Photoshop. That's gonna add some, um, some sharpening, some detail in there, so. Uh, we let's remove it for now. Uh, one thing that you could do is maybe um, add some noise reduction. Um, again, if you were just going to do a single image uh, with this kind of process, and you can do just a single image with this process, uh, and it, the effect will be pretty cool. If you are going to do that, I would recommend doing some uh, some luminance noise reduction uh, just to kind of you know, smooth some of this out. Um, however, since we're stacking, I'm going to leave that alone for right now. And if we need extra, um, I will do that in uh, Photoshop later on. And then I'm gonna just do the uh, chromatic aberrations. I don't typically do, if I'm gonna stack stuff, I'm not, I don't typically do the uh, profile correction. Um, I find it could get it can get a little wonky uh, with the stacking and aligning if you do that. So we'll just keep that there for right now. And really, that that's going to do it for our Lightroom um, edit, right? So here's where we started. Here's where we are now. If you're going to do just one, uh, you know, frame, you could certainly take this into Photoshop and then pick up where we're gonna where we're going to go in Photoshop. But um, if you're going to do more. You're going to do uh, Command or Control C to copy all of those setting settings. And I typically leave off healing and uh, crop um, just because, you know, if I did do some of that, I don't necessarily want to do it to all of them. Um, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But let's take a look. Okay, so this is, this is our image here. Here's all of our shots kind of one by one so cool all five look great so we're going to right click edit and we're going to edit those in photoshop as layers the bottom selection and we'll wait for those to load in all right all right so with those loaded in um you can see them all here on the edge here which is awesome first step that we want to do is we want to make sure these are aligned right and so i'm going to do that by so taking the second to last layer and shift clicking making sure all of these are selected 
I like to do um, difference, and you can kind of see right there, um, you know, how you can see that, right? So I'm gonna uh, turn off the first three layers, select this uh, second to last layer, and we're going to zoom in a bit. And what I'm looking for is kind of that moon. Um, we're gonna hit V for our move nudge tool, and we're gonna nudge it until that moon, really we could drag it and then nudge. So I'm going to drag it there so it's pretty close. And let's see. I'd say right about, that might be a little too far. Right about there is probably going to be the best we could do. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, remember the moon is moving across the sun, you know, during this whole thing. So it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be it'll be good enough. Really, what we're doing, what we're looking for, is this uh, corona on the outside, making sure that we get most of that. And I think this white, um, these white spaces here, is that's just clouds that we're seeing. And then we're going to do the same process for all five of these. So boom. I think that's going to be good for that one. <laughs> and this, uh, this does take a little bit of time, but I also found, you know, sometimes if you're doing like a whole scene and doing a, um, a stack in a lining like this, right? Um, maybe it's a, you, you did a bunch of, um, seascapes or mountains or ranges or something like that. You took a bunch of photos of that and you wanted to, um, align those the auto align would be great uh, for this i found that it doesn't really work that well so uh, manually doing it you will get a much better job much better result okay so once they're aligned we're going to switch that back to normal so that all of these are normally aligned or normal um, layers and you can you know click through make sure you know nothing moves too far as you're going through there great all right so now we want to select all of our layers right click and we are going to uh, convert to a smart object so what this is doing is it takes all those layers and puts it into one smart object uh, so that you know you could do a bunch of cool things with it right um, and i'll show you one of those cool things here in a minute but if you ever needed to, for whatever reason, go in and edit one of those layers, let's say um, you forgot to paste uh, your settings from Lightroom onto one layer, you could double click in here and it will allow you to edit each of those layers individually. And then when you exit, it will ask you to save, you save it and it will update this smart object, which is really neat. All right, so now that we have this smart object we're going to go ahead and image nope not image uh, layer smart objects stack and we want to do mean so this is going to take the the mean of each pixel in that smart object which is pretty sweet so now you can see how clean this is and how much detail we have, which is awesome. All right, we want to make sure that this moon is in the absolute center. What we're going to want to do is instead of cropping, we're going to want to do 
deselect. Let's select our circle here again. Let's create layer fill white deselect V for move tool. And we want to put that in the center. And now we want to move this to the center. And now in order to solve this problem of the white space, we could do um, we could do a new layer and fill that new layer with black. And let's make sure that's on the background. Deselect, and there you go. If we wanted to do that, we can merge those. Oop. Well, yeah, we could merge them. The thing with merging right now is if if we were to want to go back into that layer and edit any of the um, layers in that um, that stack, uh, we couldn't. Um, but I, I think we're fine here, so I'm going to merge that. I'm going to copy this layer, do my radial again, and let's see what that looks like. takes a minute okay that looks a little better all right and now what we are going to do is this this was new to me when I was uh, editing these so this is this is kind of cool so image calculations and we want to do the top layer gray second source the bottom layer gray. We want to switch this to subtract and it should look something like this. Um, if it doesn't, uh, this offset might be set to zero. Change that to 128. And then we want to make this into a new document. And you can kind of see the detail around in the corona that the, that's going to bring out. So hit OK. And we've got this cool gray um, gray image that kind of looks like a high pass uh, filter if you were to apply a high pass filter. And that's basically what we're going to do here. Um, so we're going to select all, copy, and we're just going to paste this in. And we could turn off our blur layer. And now that we've pasted this in, we can go ahead and put this either on overlay or soft light. Either one, I'm gonna do soft light. And just by turning this on and off, you can see the difference that is making in this detail, right? Let me zoom in to like this section here. You can really see how crisp those lines are being defined. And I will zoom out to a Fill the screen. And the other cool thing is if you want it to increase this effect, all you would have to do is copy that layer and duplicate it a few times. And you could see how much more that is adding to it. And so this is where we started after the Lightroom. And maybe, maybe that's too much, but here's after with that filter. And there you go. So you could also, um, you know, to finish this up, maybe you want to do some curves and bring out some more contrast in that. Um, maybe you want to add in a brightness and if it's too bright or maybe you want to brighten it up even more you could do that and then uh, maybe a levels right maybe maybe you wanted to bring in that you know that black 
and punch in that white a little more. You want to be careful with this. But yeah, so there you go. There's there's a little more. And you know what? That might be. Brightness might be a little too much. Oof. Took it down the other way. But maybe we don't want the brightness. But you can kind of play around and see where you like this. Um, and, you know take it wherever you want from here something you want to avoid is kind of the banding that you might get um, but yeah that is in a nutshell how i stacked my corona images and made that corona a little more detailed um, i hope that you learned something in this video and uh, we'll catch you on the next one peace